July and happy 4th of July. This is kind of an impromptu Q&A on the downswing. So I get a lot of really great questions in the comment section. So I want to cover three questions today in this video. The first one's going to be, do I create the scapula glide on the lead scapula for the downswing? The second question is, when does the lead knee straighten in the downswing? And the third question is, is lateral spinal flexion the same thing as a reverse C? That's a really important one. You don't want to miss this Q&A. Stay tuned. Watch the whole video. You're not going to want to miss it. All right. First question is, do I create the scapula glide on the lead side in the downswing? And the answer to that is, in, in an ideal world, no. It's possible. I mean, I mean it's something that absolutely could be done. I mean, we see golfers all the time. Um, do shoulders back, shoulders through, but you're leaving out the lower body. So the whole thing with the scapula glide here is to put the club on plane. And remember, I'm rotating my rib cage, upper body, not lower. I sit my shift into the right. I can load the glute, but the primary mover is what? It's a shoulder turn. So as I rotate the shoulders, that's upper thoracic spine, it's rotating. Likewise, if I rotate my shoulders to the left, it's exactly the same thing. That's upper rib cage rotation. The goal of the downswing is to get your weight from the lower body over on your left side. I didn't take my shoulders with it, right? My lower body goes first. Now that I'm on that left side, I'm gonna use my hip socket. So I'm not using my shoulders to come through impact. I'm using hip socket. So the answer to that would be no. However, you can, as a swing thought, you can try this on the course. You can um, pull the club, feel like you're using your arm to pull the club to impact. So provided that you get all the way on that left side, so you go left, belly, belly button's turn and boom, and you pull through. Which brings me to the second question. The second question is, when do I straighten the lead knee? Impact. So there's three body movements, three movements that you want to sync up all together and boom, they happen. I mean, less than half a second, you want to be have, have it happen that fast. That is the shift to the left. If you're doing the TG downswing move, you're going to be using a rib cage moving from up here laterally. But the goal is, is to move your lower body. I'm not trying to move my rib cage. In fact, if you watch me do it, my rib cage really doesn't move. My lower body moves out from under me. So I need to be able to shift, get on my left side, post up, knee is directly over the ankle, no weight left on the right side. That's one move. The other move that needs to be synced up with that is the straightening of the right elbow and the straightening of the left knee. So those are happening at the same time, just like that. So you're trying to sync all of those up. Okay, so the third question is, is Lateral spinal flexion, the same thing as a reverse C, not even close. In golf, the reason for the lateral flexion is instead of me being, keeping these two pieces all together, I'm doing what we do in all other sports. I'm going to make my lower body go first. And as my lower body shifts to the left, note my shoulders are unwinding. That happens naturally. I'm not trying to unwind my shoulders. All I'm doing is shifting to the left. My shoulders just Unwound 90 degrees. Watch again. 90 degree rib cage turn. Shift left, straight left knee. My shoulders have now unwound 90 degrees. Guess what else unwound 90 degrees? My hips. My belly button tells me the degree of hip rotation. At the top of my backswing, 90 degree shoulder, and I've got 45 degree hip turn to the right. I shift left, straight my left knee. Now I am 45 degrees pointed to the left. That's 90 degrees. So my hips move 90 degrees. My shoulders unwound 90 degrees. All I did was shift to the left. But because of that, now I am what? I'm split off. My lower body is out. And then I have to come down. And that's where, uh, let's see, I'm going to do it this way. That's where that spinal flexion comes comes in. Let me show you from here, right here. Now, if my belly button is facing the target, can you see how there's a straight line? Here's where you drop your plumb line. Shoulder to hip. Can you see that? If I get here and this shoulder 
drops behind the hip, that is a reverse C. So when you're looking for a reverse C, from here, you can see I have lateral flexion. That's lateral flexion, except my shoulder is still plumb with my hip line. Reverse C, those have to split off. Does that make sense? When they split off and I'm facing forward, right, from here to here, here to here, that is not a reverse C. Because my, even from this view, can you see that? The shoulder's still in line with the hip. I didn't do this in the downswing. I just moved to the left. So my shoulder and my hip are still on the same line. Can you see that? So from this view, spinal flexion. This view, shoulder and hip are still on the same plumb line. Reverse C is this. Boom, I'm still in lateral spinal flexion, lateral spinal flexion. Now I'm going to come up. Shoulder, plumb over the hip is not a reverse C. I would have to do, I can't, I don't even think I can do it. Get my hips out there. Get my, yeah. So, no, that's not what I'm teaching. I'm not teaching a reverse C. But that's a great question, and you really need to know the difference. The reason I'm telling you about shoulder and hip, look, you guys need to learn this for yourselves because it empowers you to not get drug around all the time with all these different swing theories. This is just how it works. So that was a great question. I'm glad you asked that question. And I intend to do a lot more of these. There's lots of comments in the old TG Downswing um, comment section. So I'm gonna try to pump out you know, several of these back to back because in the comments, there's so much confusion right now. And I'm gonna do my best to clear up that confusion and help you